All early synths were analog, that's voltage controlled. Many modern synths from the Prophet 5 onwards are analog too, but with an element of digital technology in them, in the form of a microcomputer, used to memorize sound settings and recall them instantly. Now, analog synths create sound by generating an electric current using oscillators, and then filtering out certain frequencies and shaping it with the envelopes. Fully digital synths, however, use computer technology to create much more complex waveforms and therefore much more accurate imitations of other instruments. These waveforms are generated mathematically in binary code and aren't subject to the degeneration that voltages suffer by being pushed through a circuit board. This makes for a much cleaner and clearer sound than analog synths are able to produce. Of course, it's not just keyboard players that benefit from clearer, cleaner sounds. Another area in which digital technology has made an impact is with effects pedals, or in this case, rack mount effects units. Now in this rack, you can see there are two multi-effects processors. They can produce lots of different digital effects, from chorusing, flanging, through to different kinds of reverbs. I've already added on a reverb to the sound, but you might hear it change as I add on some stereo corners. Finally, I'm going to add on a long delay, and with these three effects, you can create this kind of sound. So, how does a synth work? Well, at its simplest, a synthesizer converts voltage into sound waves. Now, sound has three main elements, pitch, timbre or tone color, and loudness or amplitude. Pitch and timbre are determined by oscillators, which are the basic source of sound in a synth, and these are defined respectively by their range and their wave shape. The purest waveform you can get is a sine wave, which you can hear in this sound. The sawtooth waveform is usually used for brass type sounds. And the square waveform gives a thinner sound which is useful for string sounds. OK, let's put this all into practice. Take it away, team. One, two. One part I might play with this uh, backing is this percussive type sound. Here, oscillator one is set a sine wave to give us our basic pitch. Oscillator two is set higher to give us the effect of sticks hitting an instrument, as on a marimba. The envelope section here is generally shapes the sound and is set to a zero attack time, so the sound is instantaneous. If I lengthen the attack time, you'll hear the effect of the sticks disappearing. Also, it's set with a very short release time. Alternatively, I might play the sustained sound. Here, both oscillators are set to a square wave for a string-like sound. The filter envelope, which shapes the tone color of the sound, is set to a slow attack so that the brightness fades in gradually, as you can hear. The loudness envelope is also set to a slow attack time, so each note appears gradually. OK, let's make a noise.
because synthesizer controllers now in digital form, it means that synths can talk to each other, or even other digital devices such as sequencers, drum machines, or even computers. This is all down to a magical device known as MIDI, and in the next session of Rock School, we're going to be looking at MIDI. But for now, we'll leave you with one of the pioneers of synthesizer musicianship, Thomas Stolby. Thank you.